Welcome back to Forza Horizon 4. It is another week in the mediocre United Kingdom. And today, we've got a brand new car for us to go and unlock. For going in and completing 50% of the spring season, you can unlock a legendary Australian car. The Holden HSV GTSR from 1996. Before we get into that, there are two things we need to talk about. One, in case you missed it, I made this big long video talking about Forza Horizon 4 bands and how they are in just recently. If you missed that video, I will link to it down below. Anyways, Forza saw that video and decided to give a response that a a a answered not many of our questions. Them replying to my video and them trying to answer some of our questions is the first step. If there is no step number two, it was a failure and we've sort of kind of achieved nothing. Second thing I wanted to mention before we get too far into this, update 26 is around the corner and here are your hints. Spoiler alert, they're really, really easy to figure it out. I won't spoil them for you in this video, but if you want to see what's coming in the next Forza update, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be covering that on Monday, hopefully with some more banned information. Final thing before we go and unlock the car, Forzathon shop, as per always, Ferrari F50 and a Maserati that will inevitably break down once you expire the warranty. 50% in the spring. Hey, you got me worried there, game. I'll be honest, there we go. Holden HSV GTSR is officially ours. How did I get two cars? What happened? Why did the game give me the Lamborghini Diablo GTR for 50% in the entire festival playlist? I'm at 38%. For those of you who don't know, this thing is super, super rare. This is exactly the way it comes stock if you bought it back in 1996 with the big old rear wing, with the big old side skirts, and of course the bright yellow paint job. Holden actually only built 85 of these things and every single one of them is numbered. This one... Wait, what? Pay no attention to the god-awful interior upholstery in this vehicle. I, I, I don't even really want to test drive this thing. Racetrack immediately, please. Holden HSV. I've got some fun facts about this thing. Let's jump into it. Did you know, for example, the Holden HSV GTSR, it was only available in yellow. But being the Australians, they didn't simply call it yellow. They called it, I'm not even joking, Hella Yella. This car is super, super rare. Only 85 of them were made. But if you bought one back in the day, they cost around like 70 grand, which was actually quite a bit. But if you tried to buy one now, it's about 150K. So you made quite a good deal there. The rear wing, which I'm not even joking, is made of carbon fiber. That may not sound very special. Keep in mind, this car was made in 1996. I didn't even know carbon fiber was a thing back then. It's true. At the end of the day, it is a Holden and doesn't have the best build quality in the world. So the, the rear wing is shaking quite, quite aggressively. Oh, also that rear wing is also adjustable. So if for whatever reason you wanted to take your very rare very expensive car to the racetrack, you could adjust the rear wing on it. Bone stock? That was a fun little race. I think we might be able to do a little bit better though with some upgrades. Let's start it off with the engine swaps. Is it gonna be the same as the previous two weeks? We've got our stock V8 in here for the moment. We can toss in the 6.2 liter V8 or an 8.4 liter V10. I know we've been there before, 6.2 liter V8, we go. Probably for the moment, like a rear wheel drive A-class race car. I think would be a good spot for this thing. So we'll aim for that and see what we can do. We've just tossed on twin turbos. You can also toss on, oh my God, a Forza rear wing or no rear wing at all. Why do you give me this super cool rear wing, which I can physically see is adjustable. And then you tell me in the bottom, non-adjustable. Uh, we're definitely gonna need some grip in this thing. Let's go up to sport tires, 
probably should be okay. You already know engine spacers. Let's see what we got. How aggressive? That's pretty good. After all of our upgrades, top of A class, 550 horsepower, three and a half thousand pounds. That's, that's not bad. Is it just me or can you clarify or, or could you classify this car as a sleeper car? If you or I saw one of these things go down the road or Australians, you would all be like, oh my God, that's the Holden GTSR. If my mother saw it, she would be like, what type of shit box from the 90s is that? And why has a 16 year old put the most obnoxious rear wing on it ever? We basically went from kind of dated yellow to nice shiny yellow. Okay, nice shiny yellow. HSV GTSR with a much improved V8. That's the sound of a good old muscle car. Oh, yes. I love a good Australian muscle car. Where do we want to go and drive this thing? I think what I'm realizing with this car is you either love this car or you hate this car. Twitch chat, I'm going to start up a poll. 83% of the general population love this car. And apparently 18% of the population is massively incorrect. Let's see what we got in the ultimate sleeper car. <laughs> We'll see what happens, and we'll see if I've built anywhere near a good race car in this game. I do have to watch out. It is post-rain conditions, so the ground's going to be a little bit slippery for me and my Australian muscle car that's rear-wheel drive and has a lot of horsepower. It, it is a little disconcerting when it does look like your rear wing is going to fall off at any point in time. It doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Look how good the Australians are. Maybe, may maybe as it turns out, I actually built a good car for the first time in my life. Keep it up, Aussie muscle. We're not there yet. Up into P3. Draft off the Mustang. There's some VTEC up into P2. Kit from Knight Rider. See ya. See ya. See ya. Can you stop? Put later this thing's even better than i thought it would be that thing's dope easy p1 on the hardest difficulty in the game and a car with very few upgrades this car has the zenvo wing before zenvo <laughs> all right if the rear wing doesn't come off now then holden has some magic powers 100 miles an hour off the side of a mountain if this doesn't come off All right, well, everybody should buy a Holden because they're indestructible. You already know what we're going to be doing. If you checked out my previous videos that I did on the other two Australian cars, you would know that these things have been smashing my personal best drift scores. Can the Holden HSV GTSR keep that trend up? We're going to keep it rear wheel drive for the moment. If we need to, we will swap on all wheel drive in a bit and see if that helps us along. Drift suspension. I will be honest, that fitment could do with a little bit of work. I didn't even check out the weight reduction on our previous build. Almost 700 pounds out of this thing, down to 2,700. Maybe this is my new best drift car. We're middle of S1 class, almost a thousand horsepower, 2,600 pounds. I think this thing is gonna be pretty good. This is definitely sleeper territory now. It's definitely seen better days. I can't tell if I'm playing Forza Horizon 4 or Car Mechanic Simulator. Street trash carved into the hood. 127,000 is my personal best. I love Australian cars. I feel like you don't get cars with this much emotion anywhere else. Like, this is so cool. So, so cool. I love it without the rear wing as well. It's full on, like, beater status. It speaks to me. I don't know why. Look at the skills, by the way. Even 100,000. That's pretty good. Maybe we go for the good old classic, S-Benz, 123,000. That's a pretty good first attempt with no practice whatsoever. Can we make it two for two in the Aussie boy? Come on, really push it. Rear wheel drive all the way to the limit. Got to use the handbrake through here. Don't really have the horsepower slash speed. No! Edit 
that out. If we could not mess this one up, that would be great. Through the corner, try to maximize the points. Run a bit of a wide line there, up to third gear. Snap it back, go wide line again. Maximize the points as much as possible. You'll love to see it. There we go, 70, 80,000. Closed in on 100K there. What do we think will happen though if I head over to the tunes, tuning setup? 10 block Sean is on the case, godlike drifting. Let's give it a go. I guess we'll bring it down here. We've run this drift zone a lot recently. We've been getting a lot better at it. 129,000. With Ken Block Sean's cars, you keep them in first gear. Everywhere you go. Okay, probably shouldn't be driving in the ditch. But I think you can see the potential here for a crazy score. This car, mind-blowing performance. 105,000 points, and I missed like an entire corner. Here we go. In. More angle, please. More angle. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That is huge. Oh, I really got to run that outside line a little more. Come on. We're pretty close. We're pretty close. No. No. We were so close. Last attempt, buddy. This is all I've got. Push it to the limit. All the way out. All the way. We need all the speed. Better lines, better lines, better lines. There we go. That's not bad. That's not bad. No. 129,000. What? I just missed my personal best by 100 points. GTSR, you. You definitely put up a fight. That's going to do it for the Australian month in Forza Horizon 4. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you missed any of the videos from the month, I will link to them down below. On Monday, we will be checking out all of the brand new cars, talking about the brand new update for Forza Horizon 4. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.